In terms of third-party home screen launches for Android phones, without question, the most popular option is and has always been Nova Launcher. Sure, over the years, there have been a number of really great alternatives, but none have had the longevity and success that Nova Launcher has had for such a long time. And what's amazing is that despite being first launched back in December of 2011, can you believe, the app is still being actively supported and updated by its development team. But what you might not know is that there is actually a very active community of beta testers who are constantly testing the latest versions before they get released to the public. Like I'm talking over 64,000 members in the Nova Launcher Discord alone, which by the way, I am also a part of. But for the past nearly year, we've all been testing what has been, at least for me, the best version that the team at Nova has released in a very long time, and it's called version eight. And given that its public release is no doubt very imminent, in fact, it might already be live if you're watching this video in the future, then I thought what better time to do an entire video focusing exclusively on Nova Launcher to not only showcase the new features and options available with this new version, but also to unpack some of the more underrated and hidden features that have been around for a while now, but that I reckon not enough people know about. You can download the latest version yourself using the first link below. But with that being said, let's dive in to Nova Launcher version eight. All right, now when you first launch this updated version of Nova Launcher, you'll be greeted with this setup screen, which was introduced back with Nova Launcher version seven, I believe. And this just allows you to get some basic settings configured before you start using it. But to be honest, we're gonna be looking at most of these settings in depth later on in this video. So for now, I'm just gonna leave everything as default and come down and tap this tick icon. And once you do, you'll be taken to the main home screen in its default uncustomized state, which is fairly basic. But before we get into the weeds with customizing everything, I do want to quickly show off the best part of this version of Nova Launcher, which are the animations. You see, since the release of Android 12 and this version of Nova Launcher, we now get these pretty fluid app opening and closing animations. And if you've been using third-party launchers for some time alongside gestural navigation, then you'll know how fantastic these new animations are compared to the super janky animations that we used to get whenever we used gestures and any third-party launcher before this release. And that is why I love this version of Nova Launcher so much because it's made, for me at least, using Nova Launcher a real option once again after so many years of having to resort to using phones stock default launchers instead. But then on top of that, this version of Nova Launcher still allows for all of that incredibly complex customization as well, some of which you'll be familiar with already, others of which are new, or as I mentioned, underrated. And so to start exploring the various options available, let's long press our home screen and tap on settings. And if you've used previous versions of Nova Launcher, then you'll notice right away that we do have an updated look to our settings menu, but for the most part, everything is in a familiar spot. We do get this brand new style menu over here though, which essentially lets you customize every single component of the launcher's color palette. And by default, everything is set to what's called the system default, which essentially means whatever your phone's system default color palette is, that will apply to the rest of the settings down here. So at the moment, it's set to this default blue color, but we can then tap on this and change it to adapt to our phone's current wallpaper. So that's made everything green, or we can also tap this custom option here to set any custom color palette that we like. So let's say red, for example, as a throwback to previous versions of Nova Launcher. And then with that selected, you can see that our entire settings menu color theme has changed. And if we come back home, you can see that it has also changed the color of the search bar down here, plus some other accent colors here and there. So again, that's a really neat way to quickly change the color of just about every element within the launcher. But if we open back up our style menu, you can also dive into each of these settings here as well to change pretty much any individual color of any element within Nova Launcher yourself. So let's come down to this pop-up menu as an example, and I could change this quickly to any of these color presets here based on other various settings configurations. I can also choose a custom color using these hue, saturation, and brightness sliders down here. And then you can also adjust the transparency of said element as well. 
Then I can come over to the text section and change the color of the text using any of the presets provided, or again, by selecting a custom color if I like. And now with all of those tweaks applied, when I come back home and long press one of my apps here, you can see that those changes have been made. And so as you can see, you can really dive deep into the color configurations here to make just about any changes that you like. But let's navigate back to the main settings now. And as I said, most of these settings are the exact same as previous versions of Nova Launcher with a few new additions sprinkled throughout. One new change aside from the updated look is that we now have this larger search bar at the top here. However, in this particular beta version, I don't find that it generates that many results, particularly in comparison to previous versions. So hopefully we'll see that fixed in a future update. But aside from that, you've still got all of your various home screen customizations under this menu here, like home screen icon sizing, a toggle to enable or disable icon labels, grid sizing, customizations for your dock, which still has a separate page with a bunch of additional customizations, plus all the other usual goodies we've come to expect. One new change that you will see here and there throughout the settings menu though, is that some menus have now been converted into drop down menus like this label one here where previously it was a completely separate page. As well as that, whilst these advanced settings down the bottom here were found in previous versions, I still highly recommend anyone new to Nova Launcher to enable these widget overlap and overlap when placing toggles, as this allows for much more flexibility when you're setting up your home screen. Then if we come back, if you're looking to modify any app draw related settings, then you can do all of that under this menu here. Again, including icon size, labels, grid size, as well as whether to have a vertical list or horizontal style. You can also choose to keep this frequently used apps option enabled or disabled, which is pretty cool, but I tend to disable it myself. A couple of settings which are often overlooked on this page though are this open app drawer setting which not only allows you to switch between swiping to open your app drawer or to have a separate button that will open the app drawer instead but if you tap this settings icon here you can also enable or disable haptic feedback when you open the app drawer and also enable or disable this little app drawer indicator icon which is pretty neat. You've also got this pull to search option here, which allows you to swipe down at the bottom of your app drawer to jump straight into the search interface, which is great for one-handed use. And then besides some other settings, which I usually leave as default, you've also got this app section, which not only allows you to hide apps from your app drawer, but it also allows you to categorize your app drawer into groups, which is a seriously fantastic feature. But then the last settings in this section worth mentioning are those found under the advanced section. And in particular, this one here called remember position. If you have this enabled, then it'll always save the scroll position of your app drawer, even after you've opened and closed apps, which may or may not be something you find useful. Now, if we come back from there and open up this folders section, these are all settings familiar to previous versions of Nova Launcher. However, I often feel that a few of these go unnoticed, including this option here to change the opened folder view from the default window option to this immersive option. And you can also enable this align bottom toggle to move the position of the folder down towards the bottom of your screen, which is really great for one-handed use. Then you can also disable this show folder name option for an even cleaner look. And I've got to say, I'm a huge fan of this particular folder configuration. If you're also looking to edit the look of the actual folder icon itself, then you can do that under this folder icon appearance menu. However, I often find the best way to edit the look of a folder icon is to actually long press your folder on the home screen, then tap the edit icon, then tap the icon here and navigate to an icon pack of your choosing. Then if you find and select some sort of unique folder looking icon, like one of these dot icons from the candy cons icon pack, for example, and then making sure that we disable this reshape option here, you can essentially make that fairly plain looking folder look way, way cleaner. And this is a surefire way to add some handy functionality to a home screen without making it look super cluttered with stacks of folders on show. All right, back into the settings menu though. And if we now open up the search menu here, one new option that has shown up in Nova Launcher version eight is this one here called micro results. And this essentially makes the search bar way smarter than before, allowing you to do things like calculations, unit conversions, open direct links for package tracking numbers, plus a heap more. 
And then underneath that are these new branch search options, which allows you to expand the functionality of the search bar even further by allowing you to search for in-app shortcuts and contacts, which is really useful. You can also change what search providers are used for the search bar under this menu here. And you can even add custom search providers if you like by entering their URLs in this menu here. And then all your usual customizations regarding the look of the search bar can be found under these desktop and draw search bar menus respectively. Now this look and fill menu is pretty much untouched compared to previous versions, but there are a couple of items worth mentioning. Firstly, under this icon style page, if you're finding that all of your custom icons have these shapes behind them that you don't like the look of, well, that's thanks to this option here called reshape legacy icons. And setting that to off will ensure that your icons retain the look of the original icon pack. You can also come into this pop-up menu here to change what appears whenever you long press an icon, including options to uninstall the app, open it on the Play Store, force close it, relaunch it, and even save an APK of an app, plus an option to directly hide an app from the app drawer. And you can even adjust these settings for the desktop and app drawer independently, which is really impressive. There's also an option down here to show or hide your phone status bar when you're on the home screen, which is great for taking cleaner screenshots of your setups in particular. And then there are some other settings down here as well, but I tend to find leaving these as default is the best option. Heading back and into this gestures and inputs page and Nova Launcher has long been famous for its incredibly long list of gestures and shortcuts that can seriously level up how functional your home screen is. But with version eight, they actually introduced two new gestures, these swipe left and swipe right options, which means when you're on your far left or far right home screens, you can swipe one more time to launch any app or shortcut that you like. Oh, and one handy tip, if you are using navigation gestures, then I highly recommend changing this home button action to none, as otherwise you'll find yourself accidentally launching this Nova search shortcut whenever you're on your homepage. Then if we come back and open up the integrations menu, if you wanna enable Google Discover to the left of your home screen, like most launches allow for these days, then you'll actually need to download and install the Nova Google Companion APK by opening up this link here, then by tapping this download link, and then by installing the downloaded file. Once done, tap on open, then okay. And now when you come back home and swipe left, you'll see your Google Discover page. There is also this Sesame Shortcuts integration option down here, but most of this functionality is now all essentially built into the branch options we saw on the search page. So I don't really see the need for installing or enabling this anymore. Okay, back again, and this time opening the notification badges menu, and this is disabled by default. So you wanna enable this if you wanna see notification badges on your various app icons, and you can switch between three different styles, but for me, Dots is by far and away the best and cleanest option. Then we have one of the all time great features of Nova Launcher, the backup and restore section. And this is the same as it has always been, but if you haven't used it, well, this allows you to not only create backup files of your entire Nova Launcher configuration, settings menu and home screen layout included, but it also allows you to restore other backup files as well. And if you've ever used my customization app palette, well, most of the setups in Palette have launcher backup files available. And this means you can literally recreate some of the setups within Palette in mere minutes just by downloading and then restoring the respective backup files. One thing to note though, is that the backup files do not restore third-party widget configurations like widgets set up with KWGT, for example. It'll only restore the placements of the widgets. So this isn't necessarily a completely one-click solution, but it'll still get you really close. Now, if we come back one more time with the beta version of Nova Launcher 8, you will also get access to this labs menu by default, which dubs itself as a place for experimental settings. And whilst that does sound very exciting, I found that most of these are not particularly useful for most phones. We do get quick access to either grant or deny various system permissions down here though, which is kind of neat, plus a few other funky debug and weather settings down here. But like I said, I generally find I don't need to touch any of these. 
The last thing worth mentioning in the settings menu at least is this advanced menu down the bottom. And there are two settings of note here. First is this restart Nova Launcher toggle, which can be useful if the app is playing up or not updating icon packs, for example. And the second is this screen lock method. So for example, if under your gestures and inputs menu, if you've set up one of the gestures to lock your screen, then these are the lock options that you can switch between. The best, in my opinion, is the accessibility option, which you'll have to go in and grant the app accessibility access if you wanna use it, as this will just lock your screen as though you were pressing your power button, or in other words, the way most of us are used to. But you do also have this device admin option, which will actually completely lock your device as though it's just been restarted, forcing you to enter your pattern the next time you wanna unlock it. And so that is it for the settings menu, but real quick, I do wanna mention a few things that are found outside of the settings menu. The first being this slightly updated widgets interface, which shows each widget menu in a collapsed state now. And this makes it way quicker to sift through this pretty long list of widgets. So that is a very welcome change. And then if we close that, for those who are new to Nova Launcher, then you may not know about the advanced icon theming options you get when you long press any of your app icons. I alluded to this earlier when talking about customizing a folder icon, but let's say I long press the Play Store icon here. If I then tap the Edit icon, this will open up the menu for advanced icon theming of that specific Play Store icon. So this includes changing the icon independently. It also includes changing or removing the app label and then get this. We can also use this menu to configure both swipe up and swipe down gestures for the icon itself. So for example, I could set a swipe up to launch into, let's say the My App section of the Play Store, which is an area of the Play Store I visit all the time. And then I could set up a swipe down to open up, let's say the Nova Launcher settings menu itself. And then as you can see with those options configured, when I swipe up or when I swipe down, those shortcuts are launched. And for me, this is seriously one of the best and most underrated features of Nova Launcher that has the potential to seriously level up how functional your home screen is. Oh, and last thing worth quickly mentioning on the home screen here is that you can also long press the search bar at the bottom to quickly replace it with any correctly sized widget of your choosing. So that's pretty neat as well. Now, one thing to note before we finish up is that some of the settings I showcased in this video do require the paid version of Nova Launcher called Nova Launcher Prime, including all gesture options, the ability to group and hide apps from the app drawer, notification badges, swipe actions for icons on the home screen, plus a few other handy tools, all of which are well worth the price in my opinion. However, I did reach out to the Nova Launcher team and they were super kind to give each of my channel members a promo code to Nova Launcher Prime. So a big thank you to them. And along with that, being a channel member also gives you access to all of the other monthly top Android apps related promo codes that I release, plus access to the members only Discord. So if that sounds like something you're into, then I'll I'll leave a link down below to where you can join. But then aside from that, that's pretty much everything you need to know about Nova Launcher version eight. As you can see, there's a lot of stuff that is similar to previous versions. And there is of course still some refining left to do like where some settings menus look like past versions of Nova Launcher and so forth. But aside from that, as I said at the top, the integration with gestures with the new and improved animations, that is what makes this version so exciting. And if you're now wanting some inspiration on how you can make your home screen not only really functional, but also really, really good looking, then you should totally check out my home screen customization app called Palette, which is filled to the brim with over 1500 unique home screen setups, many of which were made with Nova Launcher and many of which have Nova Launcher backup files available. And I've even created a bunch of videos on the channel that walk you through in detail how to recreate these setups on your own phone. So I'll link to the most recent episode up in the cards and down below in case you're interested. Aside from that, if you enjoyed the video, then a sub to the channel would be amazing. But that's it. Thank you all very much for watching and I will catch you later.